God's grace and mercy and peace are yours from the Father and from our Savior, the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Our scripture text for our sermon today uh, is from John 17, verses 20 to 26. Words that were read to you earlier this morning. My dear fellow believers in Jesus Christ, our Savior, has it ever bothered you that there are so many different Christian churches out there? You know, Lutherans and Catholics and Presbyterians and Baptists and Methodists and Episcopalians and Assemblies of God and Pentecostal, non-denominational churches, and then all kinds of flavors within these different denominations. And all these different churches have a little different theologies with different practices, different ways of doing things in their churches. On the outside, to our eyes, the Christian church looks hopelessly divided. You know, splintered into thousands of different groups, shattered by disagreement. And here's where God speaks to us today and says this to us. No, it isn't. It is not so. My church is not divided. Don't judge by your eyes. Don't assume that, that how you see the church, God says, is how I see the church. For you see, God sees all Christians as one. He sees all Christians as united in our Savior Jesus. This, we call it article of faith. That is our sermon theme today, as Jesus himself leads us to this Bible truth. All Christians are one. And we'll see two points in connection with that sermon theme. First of all, the apostolic word has created this unity. And we'll also see, secondly, from our scripture text, that growth in the word is what deepens this unity. First, let us note the context of Jesus' words here in our text. Jesus is praying his, we call it his high priestly prayer, the night that he was betrayed by Judas. He has prayed for himself. And he has prayed for his mission as the Messiah, the Savior. And he has just prayed for his apostles, that specific group of 12 men who were chosen to extend his kingdom over the whole world, chosen to be the foundation of the New Testament church. And now we hear him say this in verse 20. My prayer is not for them alone. I pray also for those who will believe in me through there, that is the apostolic message. Jesus prays for all the people of the New Testament era who will come to faith in him, who will believe in him through that apostolic word. Really, he prays here for you and for me. Jesus says that all Christians will believe through their message. He's, again, he's referring to the words of the apostles. Because it is only through the apostles that God has given his word to this world. It was only to the apostles that God gave that beautiful promise of verbal inspiration. That their words would be God's words. The Bible says it this way. All scripture is given by inspiration of God. It was Matthew, Mark, Luke, John, Paul, Peter, James, the apostles, and their close associates that God used to write down his word. He didn't give that promise of inspiration to all of his people. As your pastor, as your preacher, 
I am presenting God's word only if I am proclaiming the words of the apostles and their meaning to you. You see, I personally have no promise of inspiration. I'm preaching God's word only when I correctly apply the apostolic message to you. And this is true for any preacher today, any pastor, any teacher, any priest, any archbishop, any pope. Their words are God's word only if they correctly present the truths of the Bible. And if they don't, they are teaching false doctrine. This apostolic word has the power to create faith in Jesus. The Bible itself says, faith comes from hearing the message, and the message is heard through the word of Christ. Paul writes to the Romans in chapter 1 that the gospel is the, the power of God unto salvation for a person to believe it. These words of the New Testament are not dead letters on a page. They are the living and active word of God himself. And God speaks through them. So as such, they have the power to create the faith that they call for, to make our dead spirits alive. They have the power to make us love Jesus as the Savior from sin that he is. What a precious gift the Word of God is. <coughs> Excuse me. What a precious book this Holy Bible is. And we ought to treasure it as the most valuable thing that we possess. Oh, all of us have certain things that we own that we consider valuable. Maybe it's those homes that we live in, or our cars, or our motorcycles, or our clothes, or our electronic gadgets that we love to use. And all of us have things in life we enjoy doing. Things like hobbies and pastimes. How much more shouldn't we treasure the word of God? Because it is only through that word that God will give us faith in Jesus and get us and give us the eternal life with Jesus in his name. Now, this faith that we have in Jesus has made us one with all Christians over the whole world. Jesus says here in our scripture text today, I pray that all believers may be one, Father, just as you are in me, and I am in you. The Apostle Paul wrote to the Galatian Christians these words. He said, you are all the children of God through faith in Christ Jesus. You see, all Christians are one in Christ. This is true no matter what nation you live in, no matter what your skin color is, no matter what, what language you speak, no matter what church denomination you belong to, no matter how much money you have or how old you are, no matter whether you're alive right now or whether you lived 2,000 years ago. All Christians are one. All Christians are already united. They are one in Christ Jesus. They have a common faith in him as their only God and their only Savior. And it is that faith that unites them. The apostolic word has created this unity by giving them their faith. But we must always remember that this is an invisible oneness. This is an invisible unity. You can't see that you are one with all Christians. You simply have to believe it. The Holy Christian Church is invisible in what it really is. This oneness that we have is a oneness of faith and not a oneness of sight. And that's because faith is a matter of the heart. To be sure, God sees it, but we don't. And God says that all Christians are united. In spite of their many differences, 
We simply are called upon to take God at his word. This is why we call it an article of faith. What a comfort this is. That we are one with all Christians of all ages from all over the world. Because we believe in the same Lord Jesus Christ. We Christians are never alone in this world. So often we feel so isolated as Christians, don't we? So, so attacked by the unbelieving world out there. So, so persecuted by those who hate Jesus and who want to obliterate his church. And the devil loves to tempt us to think or to say, Oh, what's the use? I'll just give up believing it, of being a Christian. And I'll just live like everybody else does out there in the world. It's not worth it to be different. It's not worth it to keep on swimming upstream all the time. My friends, don't listen to that lie of the devil. We Christians are all part of a huge multitude, a massive, massive amount of people who love Jesus. God has built his church on the rock, on Jesus Christ. And as Jesus himself once said, that the gates of hell shall not prevail against it. What a beautiful comfort this is when we feel so alone. All Christians are one. And yet, while this is true right now, this oneness that we have as members of the Holy Christian Church is always in danger on this side of the grave. This oneness that we have, as long as we are still in this world, is always in danger of being lost. Because of Jesus, but because of us. For while God is always faithful to us, and God will never pull back from us, we are capable of pulling back from him. Faith is losable. We do have the power to throw Jesus out of our hearts. And so we'll always want to have God work on that faith in Jesus. We'll want him to build it up and to make it stronger and stronger. And the only tool that we have to do that is the very same tool that created that faith in Jesus in the first place. And that is the gospel in the apostolic word. And that's part two of our sermon this morning. That growth in the word deepens this unity that we have. Jesus says about all Christians, may they be brought to complete unity. I have made you known to them and will continue to make you known in order that the love you have for me may be in them, and that I myself may be in them. <coughs> Excuse me. Jesus wants his words in us. He wants to come to us as we use those words of the apostles and as they take possessions of our hearts. More and more as we live, live Jesus wants us to know what he says and what he thinks, and to speak and to act like he did. We already have this unity in him, but Jesus wants to deepen that unity and to expand that unity. And as he does that with us, he will also be doing that for us with all other Christians. In other words, as we grow in our faith-love relationship with our Savior, we will also want to grow in our faith-love relationship with other Christians. The model for this unity is the Father-Son unity itself, and Jesus points that out in our text. How does God want us Christians to interact with him and to interact with each other? Well, all we need to do is look at how the Father and the Son interact with each other. And the key point there is agreement. Jesus and the Heavenly Father never disagreed. They were one in nature, one in will, 
one in purpose. They were always on the same page. They were committed totally to saving the human race. Everything the Father wanted, the Son wanted. And everything Jesus did, the Father certified. They were totally agreed. This is the model for us Christians to express our unity with both God and with each other. Agreement. Agreement in all of God's apostolic word. The Apostle Paul wrote this to the Corinthian Christians. He said, I appeal to you, brothers, in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ, that all of you agree with one another, so that there may be no divisions among you, and that you may be perfectly united in mind and thought. Jesus said in his great commission passage, Teach my disciples to obey everything that I have commanded you. The Apostle Peter wrote these words. He said, if anyone speaks, he should do it as one speaking the very words of God. <coughs> to deepen our unity with Jesus and with our fellow Christians, we need to agree on all of God's word. Yes, I know, faith in Jesus is enough to get people to heaven. But our God never wants us to stop there. God want us, doesn't want us to have you know, our own doctrinal beliefs, our own thoughts, our own feelings. There is no you know, do-it-yourself Christianity that our God endorses. He doesn't want us to believe whatever we feel like believing. He has one standard for all Christians, and that is acceptance of all the Bible, all the words of Scripture. False doctrine divides the church of Jesus Christ. Those who deviate in some way or shape or form from the apostolic doctrine, they are the ones who are dividing the church. The Apostle Paul says in his letter to the Romans, I urge you, brothers and sisters, to watch out for those who cause divisions and put obstacles in your way that are contrary to the word of God, to the teaching you have learned. Keep away from them. Every word of the Bible is a word from Jesus. And it is a word about Jesus. And if anybody refuses to teach some of these words of Jesus, then they are the ones who are dividing the church. They are attacking the unity that God gives. You see, this is why we Christians are so afraid of false doctrine. And this is why we so stringently warn against it. This is why we Christians don't join just, you know, any old Christian church out there as, any, as if any old church is you know, good enough. False doctrine is poison to our souls. That's why the Bible tells us to test the churches and to make sure that they teach all of God's word in all of its truth, its purity, and in its clarity. Because you see, only if we are convinced of that then do we join a church and support that church in all kinds of ways and help that church carry out its mission. This is why we teach people who want to join Shepherd of the Plains, we teach them a course in basics of Christian doctrine not after, but before they join our church. Because they need to be united with us in all of God's word in order to be a part of this Christian congregation. Growth in God's word alone is going to deepen our unity in Jesus. And so if we as a congregation here at Shepherd of the Plains want to grow in this unity we have with one another, then we need to grow in the word of God together. Oh, all kinds of special programs, support groups, new buildings, setting goals, having a five-year plan, bringing in all kinds of fancy dance equipment. That's all well and good by itself. But by themselves, they will not draw us together in Christ and make us closer to each other. You see, if this congregation is going to grow and mature, 
then it has only one tool to accomplish that, and that is the Word. And especially the, the gospel that's there in the Word. Let's be a little more pointed here. All of us need to read the Bible more. All of us need to memorize and think about Scripture again and again. More of you should be coming to Bible studies here in the congregation. And you should be clamoring for that new pastor that God is going to give you someday to teach you more Bible studies. We all need to grow in the Word. All Christians are one. One in Jesus. We might not be able to express that oneness with some other Christians around us because they don't believe everything the Bible teaches. That's just a fact. This is why we have the Word of God in the first place. It's to conquer the false doctrines that people will naturally have. But we don't ever have to apologize for being confessional Lutherans, for being a Bible-believing, Bible-teaching, and Bible-toting Christian. This word of God we have, these words of Jesus, they have made us one. And if we use these words of Jesus, they will deepen that unity. God promises us that, for Jesus' sake. Amen. Peace of God, which is beyond our human understanding, will keep our hearts and our minds centered in Jesus. Amen. Please rise.